I didn't want to have to go back after them. It's one of my favorites. I love In-N-Out. But can we all just agree that their fries are not that good? So we're going after the king of their fries. And I think there might just be a new king in town. Okay, so today we're making the In-N-Out animal style fries. Look, let me just lay out some groundwork. All they are is literally French fries that are then covered with American cheese slices, caramelized onions, burger sauce, or their spread. That is it. That's what you be bussing about. So we're gonna do everything we know with our culinary techniques, put them together and make something that is better. And let me tell you something, I think it's gonna be better. Now, with all that said, let's make this, shall we? We're in Houston and the closest In-N-Out was 30 minutes away. So we're just gonna try it here. Oh my God, there's a line. Uh, can I just do one order of animal style fries? Right, Thank you. Have an awesome day. Thank you, you too. I didn't realize they were gonna give it to me like this. That smells good though. Now we're gonna go eat it. We're eating it here fresh because we're so far away. All right, I'm trying to be fair here. Well, for one, they always lose in the fry department. I mean, look at this. Your fries should not do this. The cheese actually isn't melted. It's totally solid. Hello? It's literally slices of American cheese melted on top of soggy french fries, caramelized onions that aren't even fully caramelized. Their burger sauce is solid. It's like one of the best in the world. The biggest problem is that it turns into one giant mass. I've said it before, I'm a California boy, right? I'm from LA. I love In-N-Out. I'm a big fan, I always have been, but of their burgers. Their fries have always lacked. The crazy thing is, is I'm talking all this mess about it being soggy and the cheese not being melted enough. We literally, we, from In-N-Out, 30 seconds later, I'm eating it. Like In-N-Out is right there. So before anyone's like, oh, Josh, will you probably let it sit? Shut up. We're gonna go back through the drive-through. I'm gonna order everything separate so we can reassemble it and heat it back up there and then do the side-by-side -side taste test because Papa is merciful. Right, so here we are. These fries are comprised of four main components. The fries, obviously, the sauce, the American cheese, except we're doing something a little different because we're oh, very high beast and the caramelized onions. First, let's prep our fries. You're gonna need three to four russet potatoes, nice and plump. Peel those bad boys and cut them into batons about the size of, well, a french fry. I actually like using this machine so they're geometrically perfect and because it's the same one that In-N-Out uses, I believe. And there's a link in the description for that if you want one. Now, once all those bad boys are cut, give them a quick rinse, drain the water, then cover them completely so they are submerged with cold water. Season that water generously with salt and let them sit at room temp for one hour or up to eight hours in the refrigerator. Now, while that's going, let's make our caramelized onions. You'll need two to three large sweet onions, cut off their tops, then slice them in half, peel those brothers, then just give them a medium-ish dice. Ideally, you want to keep them uniform, but they don't need to be perfect. Look, it's not rocket science. It's papa science. Next, get a medium-sized pot and add three tablespoons or 42 grams of unsalted butter. Heat that over medium heat until the butter is totally melted and boobling. Then add your onions, season that to taste with salt, plus a small pinch of sugar. Give that a mix to coat with the butter, and then simply let that cook over medium heat, stirring often for about 45 minutes or so. Now look, don't get all freaked out, okay? No panicking. You're just gonna be slowly alternating the heat from medium to low so the onions don't char, stirring every so often so the onion get coaxed into first a blonde, then a little darker, to a tan, then to a brown, all the way until they're a pretty deep caramelized color. I like them dark, not burnt, just deeply caramelized. You may need to add a splash of water here and there as you're cooking them if they start to get too dry. Once they're done, they should look like this. Now that you have the onion, we can make our incredibly important sauce. This is everything, so don't skip any of these ingredients here. Now start with three quarters of a cup or 175 grams of mayonnaise, half a cup or 120 grams of ketchup, a quarter cup or 80 grams of Dijon mustard, followed by two dill pickles that have been finely diced evenly, one tablespoon or seven grams of thinly sliced chives, one tablespoon or 14 milliliters of Worcestershire sauce, and two cloves of garlic grated. Season that to taste with salt and pepper, give that some whiskey business, until combined beautifully, and finally stir in half of your caramelized onion. This is a sauce to behold for fries fries, sandwiches, or heck, even chicken dipping. Now at this point, we're almost ready to make our fries, but remember, I know like just plain old American cheese. So we're gonna instead make a Mornay sauce, which is essentially a fancy cheese sauce. In a medium saucepan, add two tablespoons or 28 grams of unsalted butter. Heat that over medium heat once it's completely melted and boobling. Whisk in two tablespoons or 20 grams of all-purpose flour. Let that cook while continuously stirring for about 45 seconds. Then gradually whisk in one cup or 240 milliliters of warm milk. Now just keep heating and mixing that mixture until it begins to thicken. Remove it from the heat, whisk in one cup 
cup or 90 grams of smoked cheddar, half a cup or 50 grams of grated Gruyere, and half a cup or 40 grams of grated American cheese. So, you know, you got a little bit of that nostalgia. Whisk all that in until completely incorporated and melted. If you need to turn the heat back on, you totally can. Just don't let it boil or anything. Then keep it in a warm area, covered because this sauce is boys. Okay, it's fry time. Pull your fries out of their water and dry them off as well as possible with paper towels. Then heat a heavy bottom pot filled with about two and a half inches worth of fry oil. Heat that to 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 Celsius. Then in around two to three batches, fry your fries for three to four minutes, giving them a light turn in the middle of their cook time until they are cooked through and a pale blonde. No color. Now remove those and drain on a fresh paper towel and repeat with the rest of your fry little men. Once that's done, increase your heat to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 Celsius. And again, in batches, fry your fries, this time for only two to three minutes or until they're a nice golden brown and ultra crisp. Pull them out using a spider, let them drain a little bit, then add them to a heat-proof bowl and immediately season aggressively with salt while tossing. This is important that you season while they're hot so that the salt sticks. Then immediately drain on a paper towel and repeat with the rest of your little fry men. And that's it. That is a beautifully delicious foie foie right there. Now all we have left is our assembly. Be sure to reheat your cheese sauce so it's hot and in a liquid state. You may need to add a splash of milk to loosen it up. But anyway, get yourself a bowl, add in your hot fries, hit it with a generous layer of your sauce, or burger sauce if you want to call it that, full of by a generous layer of your cheese sauce, as little or as much as you want, really, honestly. Then, of course, your caramelized onion to your heart's desire. Now, optionally, you can top that with some thinly sliced chives and fresh torn parsley because it looks nice and tastes yummy. And that is a poised animal style fry right there. Look at this beauty. I want to just cry, eat, cry again, and then eat until all the sadness in the world disappears in my eyes. So, let's do that in the taste test. This is all coming from an In N Out stand. I would consider myself an In N Out stand. And by that, I mean I love their burger. Now their fries, on the other hand, it's simple. Just a little, some of that onion. Let me just try one of their fries because it's been a second. I made their fries better and it's still behind. That's all I gotta say. My sauce, sauce and sauce, no comparison. Theirs tastes like candy and I like their sauce compared to mine. Mine is like savory, punchy, rich. My caramelized onion is actually caramelized. And when I say caramelized, I mean this versus this. This is just sauteed. We need a taste tester. TJ, it's been a while since you've been in here. Here's bite number one. And here's bite number two. It's a little bigger. Wow. Can you even guess? There's some similarities, but I'm gonna be honest with you, Chief. The second one was yours. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly didn't hate that as much as I thought I was going to. Yep. I still don't like it. Everything comes together in this. This is just like, why is this all together? Okay, you heard it here. We won, but better. In and out animal style fries. This has been a highly requested one. Look, at the end of the day, what you're looking at before you are potatoes that are fried, covered in cheese, a burger sauce, and caramelized. Onions. Let this be a lesson that technique over everything. Papa love you, Papa miss you, and if you make this, Papa kiss you. If you don't make, then Papa no kiss. You wanna know what else is full of saucy hot fries ready to be shoveled into your mouth hole? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our animal style fries, but better. They were better. We won. It was a, it was an easy one. I mean, this is one of my favorite burger sauces of all time. I don't want to say the word perfected, but I think we've gotten pretty close to perfecting our well, in and out burger sauce our way with chives and all that good stuff. Because you know how much I love chives. Everything melded together really nicely. The cheese sauce was really the key to upgrading this a whole nother level. Texturally, it's better. Flavor wise, it's better. There's more control. You can use all sorts of cheeses. In my opinion, it looks a lot nicer with glossy cheese oozing all over it instead of a lifeless slice of American cheese. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.